Islam. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Subhanallah. What's up, y'all? It's Ev. Welcome back to the broadcast to the Cheat Code Media. Info and such. Got more info today. Today video, I got a um, a couple more audio links from um, Sam R. Now's channel. Shout out to Sam R. Now on YouTube. <clears throat> and a question about prayer. Hopefully, I could um, give a little insight on prayer and what it is, not just by me or what, what I take it to be. I can... Um, walk through it scripturally and um, give you what I see as far as where prayer is in our day-to-day, -day, how it applies. And e even if it works or not, does, play does prayer actually work? So that's what this video is going to be um, centering on pretty much. Didn't go live this morning. Um, <clears throat> didn't have my live energy today, but on here I could take my time. I won't feel like that um, I need to interact like one point because the comments are different. They require uh, an answer. And when I'm live, I don't mind going here, there, this place or that place. But when it's a specific, specific point, a topic that I'm trying to make, uh, I'd rather record it because it'll help me stay closer to um, the subject. And you know with me, it don't take but a second for me to go over here, over there. So I'm going to try to stay on point with what I'm talking about today. So um, all of us have something that we think, and and it's it's not fair to say people don't have a right to think the way they think, or you know, a belief system that so many of us had um, since birth, I guess, since we've been old enough to know <clears throat> what prayer is, our conception of God, and it's always been laced with prayer, with prayer and God gonna do all these things for you, and if you pray, all you gotta do is ask God, and He gonna give it to you. <clears throat> Um, that's the premise that all of us was basically given a book. And then when we pray and the stuff don't happen, of course, it's God's fault or God not responding on it. It's just not working. So you have atheism working the back foot off of this because people are praying, but the prayer is just not working. So... If the prayer is not working, then that mean that definitely God isn't real to most people. But for me, um, just over the last five years of my own life, without having anybody else to get in my way or of my understanding of what prayer was, um, <clears throat> I started having a conversation. I don't want to call it prayer, you know, um, and it came with me reading the scripts more. What most people and their understanding and their belief or what they've been led to believe or shown, and they really think that they are into any books, either the Quran, Torah, Apocrypha, whatever. Everybody that's in those books basically have a belief system. You do. That's at the core of all of it. It's a belief system. And what I've been trying to share with people, so we don't have to go to the supernatural, spiritual God showing up in the midst of smoke. That was never how this was meant to be, right? Most people think that the creator is a genie or when they ask for something that that's what happens. Well, the deal is contingent upon your behavior, the way you act. You know, like if you act in accordance with what we require to act like, wouldn't be anything to ask for. So when I tell people, what I pray about is focus and praying to stay on the path that the creator made. That's it. That's all it is. And whether you believe something or not, it's not going to work out for you. You know, um, you praying for things is it's nothing that the creator is going to give you. That's that's the beginning and the end of it. What he gave us was hands, feet, eyes, ears, mouth. So we could master all that we needed to master right now. We have an order for that masterism. And it's like the drug dealer. Like, he don't want to hear any excuses. You came up short. And people think that I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm getting results from what I'm saying. So 
it's not about whether you believe anything or not. It's do you have results to show? So if you praying to the creator and nothing's happening in your life, it's because you stuck on something that you not letting go of and you not being real with yourself. Um, I don't know anybody else's shortcomings. I don't know. That's between them and Allah, right? But Allah knows. When I come before people, I tell them everything that I did because I'm not ashamed in front of y'all. I know some of y'all got secrets that y'all can't tell. So my my shame is for the creator. My my repentance is in that I did something that was wrong with the creator. Now, I got a lot of punishments for being outside of line with the creator, and I knew I deserved them. So I didn't feel like a victim, and I got mad at times, you know. The cancer really hurt. It was It was painful. And I don't think people had a capacity to feel anything that's not in their body because um, I don't know how much else passion I can put into what I'm saying, but until it hit them, they don't get it. And sometimes it's just going to have to hit you because you can't keep talking. It's, it's not about talking. It's not about these rituals. It's not about any of that. It's your own stubbornness that got you where you are. And it should be your stubbornness to get you out of it, you know? So you're going to let go of whatever it is that the creator had in mind for us not to have. What's going to torment you for your life? Unjust gain. Proverbs 1, it'll take the life of its possessors. Anything that the creator deems as unjust, if you are a part of that, it's going to be in your life some kind of way, shape, form, or fashion. Again, I don't know what anybody's done, but I know that a law is correct. So I know if something's fucked up in your life is you did something fucked up or you doing something fucked up. It won't be a compromise, right? And it's not that mysterious to read what we responsible for and what we accountable for and then carry it out. Now, if you're in a season where everything is going haywire, it look like stuff is wrong in your life, but you say you've been keeping Torah or the word of God or Allah and it's still bad happening in your life. Well, you did bad. That's the that's the way to make you not comfortable with doing it again. But you have to realize what was against the creator and your ignorance of where you went wrong with Allah. Like it's not up to Allah to explain that to you. I've shown this to people without government. They not going to show you that you don't need a driver's license. They not going to show you that you don't have to pay taxes. I've walked in that and it's still unbelievable to some people. And, and that's that's just what it is. You're not going to have a relationship with Allah in your belief system and your religious system and your fear of of being punished for some stuff that was out of order. Um, The first thing I talk about is accountability, right? That's where your prayer is. Your prayer is asking for you to stay accountable. You're not asking for anything. That's not a part of this this covenant to ask, to say, can I have or get me out of something that you got yourselves into. Um, children, the next generation is spoken about. Maybe people don't believe that uh, Exodus 23, 4 and 5 is accurate. I, I don't know whether they believe in it or not. My, I, I don't believe. I just operate in that. And I didn't get off scot-free. I'm sitting in this now because I went through something. I, I went through something. You know what I'm saying? I think people hear me now like I didn't go through that. And I share all of this stuff. And people just want to hear what they want to hear. Wellness not coming for you like that. If you did anything against Allah, he just in punishing you. If your life is confusing and shambles right now, then you have to stop that. And part of it is taking that ass whipping. You know what I'm saying? You won't get any clarity unless you know. You know. I can't know for anybody. I knew for me and I shared openly with everybody. You know, either I'm doing right or I'm doing wrong. Either I did right or I did wrong. It's years and years and years and years and years of Christmas celebrations, eating out of order, idolatry, whether I was fooled into it or not, I'm accountable for it. And if I don't put that up on the altar and own up to all of it, 
I'm still living in it. There's no difference. None at all. So it has to be a period of accountability and not a period of being victims. This is one of the major things with blacks on a whole. It's like they don't equate punishment with Allah. So it's like Allah is robbing you or raping you of your life. And it, was, it wasn't it was his purpose for us to suffer. Like it talks about all these things, prosperity, um, wealth, living long, living healthy. And it gives the, the directions to have that. And if you don't have that, you drop the ball somewhere. You not knowing it, you not believing it, you not complying is all the same thing. I didn't um I didn't think anything different than than dying. Like that that consumed every everything in my life, like just being dead. You know, and it give you a clarity that you that you don't get when you entwined in things of money, little wires crossed where you might lose this or you might lose that life or death. It'll put all that in perspective. And when you have the chance to change shit, you change it. You know, and know that I track this in the house. I'm going to get it out of the house. If your hand's still working, no matter how painful they are, use them. If your legs still move, don't matter that they hurt, walk with them. They hurting for a reason. Some kind of way they got neglected. Now it's painful to walk with your legs. You got to walk. You can't pray your way out of that. Like, the creator not going to come and give you a new pair of legs when you didn't take care of the legs by the legs, anything in your life. Your legs get worn out because you misused them. You can't pray your way for new legs. What you can do is work your legs out and make them stronger, right? And it might hurt a little bit. And you might think, why are my legs like this? You neglected them some kind of way. And if he gave you faulty legs off the rip, then... This is what I say to you, for faulty legs off the rip of anybody that was born with a disability or you got a family member that was born with a disability. And this is how I give verses to people, not in a Christian manner to make people feel good about a situation. And that's, that's bullshit. These verses I use to convict or condemn me. So I'm doing them with everybody. Like, this is how I got to where I am. And I'm not, I can't do it any other way. And then in the creator, no, Allah, no, I said what I was supposed to say. People can hear really well, but it's hard for people to answer, to answer for what they've done, what they still may be doing. And you're going to come to terms with Allah. You're going to come to terms with yourself. Like, you'll be in your way, especially on this path. It's not going to get easy. You know, you're going to submit fully to the will of Allah. And all of that is being accountable for what you may have done and thinking about it. Honestly, like every day I'm thinking about stuff, all kinds of things. And then asking, asking out or forgiveness for that at that period of my life. And I didn't know, but that's where I am honestly. And with that, I get more insight. You know, and and people want to talk about spirituality. Everybody got this view of spirituality. And I'm going to tell y'all what spiritual is right now, right? And I don't have to ask for that because I know firsthand from our creator exactly what your spirituality is. People always talk about this natural, this natural, that. And you're right. Everything is natural. Fear is natural, right? Jealousy is natural. Envy is natural. Hate is natural. All this shit is natural, so you can't have hate in your heart if it's natural. You know, everything is natural, right? Some of your natural stuff is good. Some of it is bad. Fear is natural. Do you know what living in the spirit is? Overcoming that fear. Hunger is natural, right? Why do you fast? To overcome the natural. Nothing more natural than you eating. So when you overcome that, that's something that you, you need for life, right? Jealousy, hatred, Overcome all of these things and you live in the spiritual world, right? It ain't what y'all talking about. And I know because I live it and I live it and I have results from it. And people just, you're not going to ignore it and say that <laughs> you can't. 
it's, it's never going to be some spiritual wing creature that's going to come and do anything for you. It's going to be another one, just like me, just like you, that's going to do something to you or do something for you. And all of that happens because you're not in the order to see them for who they are or even to know who you are. So you'll do business with evil people and they won't look like they're evil to you because the gain that you seek it come through them. It's some kind of something that you did or it's not in line. The creator know it. He'll always know it. And that thing will always fail. You get a season of thinking, oh, it's, it's okay. It's not okay. Most people live in the mercy of Allah, not in the grace of Allah. The difference in mercy and grace is you might have got a raise at work, right? And the creator ain't had nothing to do with that. That was by your own evil counsel. That was by you chasing the money. That was by you chasing. Other people get a raise that keep the word of the most high, whatever the grace. That's that's what it is. At any given day, you could be out of here. Out of here. You live, you prosper by the creator just having mercy on you. Those of us that keep his word, we have that. You know, we're going to get grace the same way that a person that has a good record at work, showing up every day, doing a job, coming in on time. Then they miss a day, no call, no show. The creator, Allah, the, the boss at the job, they know that person's character. This does not like them. Something had to happen. So we're going to give them a buy. And more times than not, something did happen with that person because their, their consistency, the creator can vouch for that. Knowing his heart can vouch for that. His heart, his work, his work, not his heart. You see his heart by his work, not by what oh, I believe, by a sacrifice by his work. This other guy, we've seen his work. No call, no show, always late, uniform dirty. You are gone. Any any day, you're gone. He's living off the mercy of the job. Now, they could, they could get rid of him at any time. Any time. That's you. That's your children. That's everybody against the creator. So, God spoke all these words. Now, y'all see something fly in my mouth? God spoke all these words saying, let me use this. This is, I could read better out here, y'all. My, my bad, my bad. Ah, Deuteronomy. Not Deuteronomy, Exodus. That's where I was at. Hope everybody is well today. Exodus 20, God spoke all these words saying, Allah, y'all know when I say God, I mean Allah. And God is you and I. You and I are God by what this word was supposed to mean. The creator, something completely different. Keep that in mind and um, your connection will be better. You know, no idols, have no other gods but for the creator. And that's me and that's you. Just, just, or, or prove me different and use the scripts to prove me different. Don't use your imagination. Don't use what anybody told you because now we're in the realm of something different. So you have to use the realm within that you in to, to describe that which you in. So when the word God come up, know what it means. This is this is some of the beginning of the ignorance and the misconceptions of these scripts. I am your God, and it's not saying that. It didn't say that. <laughs> Creator L that brought you out of Egypt, the house of bondage. Never happened. They were never in the house of bondage. They actually were a part of the Egyptian nation. You shall make for you shall not make for yourself a sculptured image in any likeness of what is in the heavens above or or the earth below or in the waters underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, your God, Elo, Elohim, am an impassioned Elohim, visiting the guilt, Allah, Elohim, the same thing, visiting the guilt of the parents upon the children, upon the third and upon the fourth generations of those who reject me. So what's rejecting them? What's rejecting our creator? Anybody have any ideas of what what would be considered rejecting the creator? No, no other images, right? No gods for yourself, for your own digging through the script. Psalms 82 and 6, say ye are gods. That's enough for me. No other man is going to interpret that for me. Y'all know why I'm that arrogant? And I walk through that pain, that hurt, all of that myself to get the understanding of what it meant not to come up and have a sissy fight with words and don't have any results from it. So 
that gives me a little more confidence too to know that I actually stepped in something that was written and that worked out exactly as it was written. All my freedom from sickness, from being under the state, it come with my understanding of what God is or what our creator is. And because a lot of people don't understand it, they they doubt what I'm saying. And I'm like, well, you, you're not doubting me. You, you're not doubting me. That's not what's happening because you've seen it work in my life. So you're not doubting me. And all I talk about is a law. So people might want to rethink their relationship and how it is and what they perceive Allah the creator to be. Now, you want to talk about supernatural or this big, um, this, this massive beginning and end? I believe, I do believe. Real simple. Like, and, and I would say believe in that thing because I've never seen it, but I can give a whole bunch of two real quick examples that no man will ever be able to recreate. That's oxygen and um. Well, air and water. And I don't feel like having a whole drawn out conversation because I'm not enticed by ignorance or somebody pretending that they know more than I know. I'm going to say every time you don't. And that'll keep them honest. You know, it'll keep them honest because I know it's nobody here that has infinite knowledge. We learn in day to day as we go. And for myself, I'll take my example. I, I'll follow what I already started. And I had fear. I had anxiety, all of that, but I walked in the spirit over that fear and found law. And now I find myself not paying taxes or driving with a license. I'm not asking any of y'all to believe anything. There's no need to believe. All you would need to do is act on it. So, And it didn't come without a price. I got here by being away and getting punished for being away. I realize now why my beard won't grow back. I heard today... Um, I do suffer from Crohn's, but I didn't just hear that today. Greg Doucette, um, Coach Greg, personal trained his wife or his girlfriend. Um, she, they went to do some hair transplantation, but her Crohn's had her hair breaking off and not growing because it was brittle from the Crohn's. And I was wondering why before I could grow more of a fuller beard, but now it's, it's well, it's not bad, but before it would come up in here. Anyway. Just talking, um, but yeah, um, what was that, y'all? Uh, as far as far as praying, right? The um, the praying part, you're praying that you stay in line with the order of the Creator, so you're not outside of that order. We're gonna talk about the supernatural. The supernatural is this: all of us at any given time can be. The good that the creator made the world to be or the evil that is possible to be too. Um, and laying down uh, uh, what our creator, Allah, what the character is in Isaiah 45 and 7 to say, I create the light, I create the darkness, the good, the evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, the way I interpret law is the proper way, right? So when I interpreted driver, it was somebody that made money in mind because that's what the lawful definition of driver is. Regular people thought I was crazy. If you look at my video now, there's people on there in the comments trolling me, laughing at me for getting locked up, for actually standing up for what the law was. It's people that ridiculed, that made fun of me, and I got found innocent. They never came back and said they were sorry. They just had that moment. They didn't pass it on. Look, that guy was really right about it. So we continue in this. You know, pride, ego, uh, people talking shit and then not going back and correcting themselves is a reason why it stays like this. You know, like, but I was the one that had it right. Nobody came back and said everybody doubted. Um, the judge, the same thing. The video is up here. That's that's the whole charge, the whole everything together. The driver's license, my court date. I show it. I don't think anybody see God, Jesus, Muhammad. Nobody come. Nobody was in the courtroom 
that day but me and, and everything that I was, that I was given by the creator. And I won. I didn't have an attorney there. It was a real trial. Like I, I represented what I was created to be. Everybody's messianic. When you do like this and start praying, the creator's not coming down here for you. You have every tool, every wit was given to you to, to succeed here. Now, if you bow down to another God or another man and trust them with, with telling you, then you a slave. You a slave to that person. You a slave to your fear. And that's not supernatural. You know, I, I'm, I'm stubborn enough to overcome the fear. I'm stubborn enough to walk in the spirit. You see, my, my bad traits are counteract some other one. And I'll be okay to where you tell me I can't. I tell you, you can't. You know, you don't tell me shit. And that's a bad trait till I found out something that most people were scared to find out because they didn't want to step up and say, show me. Well, the God in me gave me the right, no matter who you are or who you say you are, I say who I am. Now we got a problem, but I don't want to meet anybody there. I want to meet everybody in what Allah said, in equity, right? Like we all have the same rights to take things in the way we want to perceive it how we want, because you're going to pay for it at the end of the day. Now I'm saying we have a rule, a order from the creator, but I don't get them force your hand and not eating pork or not being a homosexual. I don't get to force your hand in any kind of thing that you do. You know, we're not in a nation, a God's nation, even though it's a one nation under God, it's a bunch of different nations on this landmass. You know, um, I hold them to one nation under God, though. If I give that up, then I lose what's mine. One nation under God, I'm not subject to any man. I don't have to pay any taxes to any man because it's just not right per God. I don't have to pray for that. I know how to present that to that man. And he understands when when God or the creator is in the picture. It puts a man in his proper place. The spirituality part of it, People going to do right or wrong based on whether they're keeping God's law or not. If somebody feeling hatred in their heart and they don't overcome that spiritually, somebody going to get hurt. Somebody going to die. Like, you're not at the mercy of children that killing in the street. You're at the mercy of parents that don't teach, that, that don't instruct their kids in the ways of Allah. Say that. Right there, Exodus 20 and 3, have no other gods besides me. You shall not make for yourself any sculptured images, any likenesses, as what in the heavens above, the earth below, or the waters underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, your God, your Elohim, am a jealous God, visiting the guilt of the parents upon the children, upon the third and upon the fourth generations of those who reject me. You shall not swear falsely by the name of your God, Elohim, for God will not clear one who swears falsely by his name. Um, it's making a promise in the name of God that you don't keep, or by Elohim or by Allah. And all these names for God, y'all, that's a distraction too. No, it's monotheism, right? monotheism one god so it's one order for all of us to live under and the complicated with religions and rituals that's a problem and um it's been like that for years people perception of what what god was the order the order of allah how we were supposed to keep it and i know a lot of people thinking that i'm probably pretty arrogant to come back and like just restructure this stuff that's been down for years. And I'm like, yeah, the only reason it's been down for years because none of y'all had enough courage to step to it or even, well, after I hit, let y'all hear some clips today, you honestly ask yourself, did you investigate this? And did you do it for, you just wanted the truth to come out or you wanted your views to go up or you wanted people to hit your cash app? I say this all the time. I'm going to have to be arrogant enough to tell y'all how humble I am. If that makes sense. It's no cash app here. No PayPal here. What do I get from this? It can't be that confusing other than trying to give people information that I come here and stand up. 
under the scrutiny. Like you can come back, drop a comment, say that is 100% a lie. And tell me where it's a lie at. Like I come and say what driving is, what income taxing is, even the sickness in my body. Like it's the same order. Had I died, had I died from the stomach cancer, that would have been the will of Allah. But my last days was living in a way that he told me to live. What happens after that, I do not know, but I got to strive the way that the creator did. Without anybody being in the way, without this person um, perverting it, without, without that person putting anything in it, the cancer took me out of society, sat me here, and gave me the ability to look at the stuff and go from this religion to that religion, seeing where they they came together and then seeing where they splintered at. And I got some... um. Check this out today. I'm um, about the Judaism, the Islam. Ah, uh, man. Let me see. Where should I start at? Uh, and then I'll read a little bit, right? Um, Sam Arnell's channel as well. And um, I didn't put him in the order, but I'll be able, to, once I play him out, to make the connection and then um, probably read the verse coinciding. And uh, again, these Jews and the people that call themselves Jews, um, they were not, they were not Israelites. Let me, let me. This is a very convenient lie because Jews at this. No, that's not that. Let me see. Uh, work with, work with the brother. But what's most relevant to the story of the Israelites is what happened to Egypt. Notice I said to Egypt and not in Egypt. When I was a kid in the synagogue, we were taught lots of explanations of how real events were later mythologized into the story of the Exodus. But nowadays, it's widely agreed by archaeologists and historians that the Exodus never happened because the Israelites were never slaves in Egypt at all. But that doesn't mean that the Israelites weren't part of the Egyptian kingdom. So, one of the first myths destroyed is that the Israelites weren't slaves in Egypt, right? So when I look at the, the story of Moses in Egypt, okay. The story of Egypt didn't happen. Part in the Red Sea didn't happen. That doesn't change the laws and the rules that these people were supposed to get. And this is how you fish through the bullshit. Are you getting caught taking pictures instead of looking and reading, right? Now, the the, the Genesis or whatever, the Exodus out of, out of Egypt didn't happen in that way. But what it ha how it happened was Israel becoming their own nation with their own constitution which was monotheism in egypt they did whatever they wanted kind of just like the romans polytheists sun gods the whole nine yards all right egypt fell into warlordism as a result of the collapse the northern canaanite tribes largely muddled through the next century to ultimately dominate the mediterranean seafaring trade as the phoenicians but the southern canaanites were totally cut off from the sea due to the resettled sea peoples and archaeological evidence from this period suggests that extensive warfare between the two groups pushed these Canaanites deep into the Judean mountains. These are the Israelites. So the Israelites got pushed into the Judean mountains, right? What happens when two different groups of people cohabitate at a place? It becomes syncretism. They start sharing bits and pieces of each other's religions and the Jews and the Israelites, two different groups of people, Jews and not Israelites. Um, and you don't need to believe that. You need to know that for a fact. You need to check that out. So um, while I'm saying it, it would be good for you to go out and prove just how much I'm lying to you right now. That would be the best thing. Let's see. Egypt fell into warlordism. You, you played that one already. Well, for most people in the modern age, the Jewish story has been told by non-Jews for non-Jews. And accordingly, it has been continually reshaped and recontextualized by politics and prejudice and taking the biblical narrative at face value. But Judaism didn't come down from Mount Sinai. It grew up organically from the soil. When the Jewish people first emerged as a distinct nation at the beginning of the Iron Age, they were keenly aware of the fragile interconnectedness in which they were able to live. It didn't come from Mount Sinai. The Mount Sinai story, Mount Gerizim, is the Samaritans. Um, I don't know how many people to go to church every Sunday, go to mosque, anywhere. Take the time other than to just study 
what they telling you there. And then those people that's just studying with, with the lies are, <laughs> y'all the ones that have a nerve to come out and all that force and talk shit when the people that sit behind those walls telling you that shit, they know what I'm saying is right. They took a job and they doing a job on you. 45-year-old Hezekiah. That's not it. Let me see. One more time. Jews are not from Mount Sinai. Jews are not from Mount Sinai. Well, for most people in the modern age, the Jewish story has been told by non-Jews for non-Jews. And accordingly, it has been continually reshaped and recontextualized by politics and prejudice and taking the biblical narrative at face value. But Judaism didn't come down from Mount Sinai. It grew up organically from the soil. When the Jewish people first emerged as a distinct nation at the beginning of the Iron Age, they were keenly aware of the fragile interconnectedness in which they were able to live. The, Jew, the Jewish people first emerged, the Judeans, the Judean mountains that the Israelites fled up into. And this was after the Iron Age. Uh, let's see. After the Iron Age. The most important God in the Israelite pantheon but what's most relevant to the story of the Israelites is what happened to Egypt. Notice I said to Egypt and not in Egypt. When I was a kid in the synagogue, we were taught lots of explanations of how real events were later mythologized into the story of the Exodus. But nowadays, it's widely agreed by archaeologists and historians that the Exodus never happened because the Israelites were never slaves in Egypt at all. But that doesn't mean that the Israelites weren't part of the Egyptian kingdom. So the Israelites were a part of the Egyptian kingdom? Egypt fell into warlordism as a result of the collapse. The northern Canaanite tribes largely muddled through the next century to ultimately dominate the Mediterranean seafaring trade as the Phoenicians. But the southern Canaanites were totally cut off from the sea due to the resettled sea peoples. And archaeological evidence from this period suggests that extensive warfare between the two groups pushed these Canaanites deep into the Judean mountains. These are the Israelites. Got pushed into the Judean mountains. And I would imagine syncretism happened with them. Um, Gregory of Nyssa acknowledged that the Christian conception of God, when there are multiple ideologies in a geographic area, you often find that there is an exchange of ideas with the dominant ideology prevailing in the exchange. This is known as syncretism. The people who allow changes to creep into a religion are not necessarily doing it with an evil intention. It may come about due to pressure from society or ruling authorities. It may even seem natural to adopt certain beliefs and practices if culturally that is what a people are used to. Big time, big time, y'all. This is exactly what was going down. And this supported even more right here. Let's check it out. The most important god in the Israelite pantheon, or the Elohim, was El, or El Elyon, literally the highest god, to whom the Israelites were commanded to make animal and grain sacrifices on top of Mount Gerizim in the city of Samaria. This common belief in El Elyon is what kept the tribes of Israel united, and ultimately what kept Judah out of the fold. Because as far as the Jews were concerned, the true identity of El Elyon was their local god, Yahweh. This might not seem like a big deal now, but each god had its own hereditary priesthood. So for Judah to have a separate clan dedicated to the worship of everyone else's most important god would always set the Jews apart as off-brand Israelites. See, they were polytheists. They weren't, they weren't the original people. And again, um, where was that? At this time, the Israelites... This understanding of local gods is especially helpful to explaining the division between Israel and Judah. The most important god in the Israelite pantheon, or the Elohim, was El. A lot of people who read the Bible for the first time... That's not it. See, the Israelite tribes represented just a handful of polities within the larger Canaanite civilization, which had a common language and a common religion based roughly around a pantheon of 24 to 40 gods. That part. Before the Bronze Age collapse, Canaan, the area comprising today's Israel, Palestinian territories, Lebanon, and parts of Jordan, was actually part of the Egyptian New Kingdom. That part. Israel wasn't, was not, never were... And the Jews again, like, where was that, y'all? This understanding of local gods is especially helpful to explaining the division between... Not it. At this time, the Israelites... Mm, where was that, y'all? 
See, the Israelite tribes represented just a handful of polities within the larger Canaanite civilization, which had a common language and a common religion based roughly around a pantheon of 24 to 40 gods. Before the Bronze Age collapsed, Canaan, the area comprising today's Israel, Palestinian territories, Lebanon, and parts of Jordan, was actually part of the Egyptian New Kingdom. Mount Gerizim. Forgot where I was at. Well, for most people in the modern age, the Jewish story has been told by non-Jews for non-Jews. And accordingly, it has been continually reshaped and recontextual. Y'all heard that part, right? Some more I wanted to drop before I start talking. Some more. Uh, this part, actually, uh, about the Israelites, how the Jews took over who they were. Because um, living in that proximity, um, the northern tribes in Judea, they were always in conflict with each other pretty much. And um, once these Israelites got taken by nations around them, it was easy for the Jews to slide in since they were familiar and usurp who they were. And um, the only people that's remaining from these, these people of ancient times are the Samaritans. You see in Christian literature, they try to demonize the Samaritans as being bad people. Judah, in fact, had just teamed up with Assyria to subdue Israel. Israel revolted two years later, only to have its government dissolved and a sizable chunk of its population forcibly removed by the Assyrians. This forcibly removed population is commonly known as the Ten Lost Tribes, which is weird on a few levels. For one, the Northern Kingdom had nine tribes, not ten. For two, only the Israelite elite were ever forced into exile. The elite. Once they take the elite out, the people that knew the laws, or, or even if they was wicked, you know, they were the ones that had the real documents. Most people couldn't read. There was a lot of literacy going on. And, and religion, people, when y'all are religious, y'all don't take the reality of, even if this story is a fictional story, you got to look at it from the reality-based place. Like, everybody couldn't read at that time. You know, who would be in charge of teaching anybody anything? People that, that had money, people that could deceive you. So this deceit been going on forever. And every time it was somebody that came up that was saying something different from what the hierarchy said, they said they were heresies, heretical, all this shit. So these little groups like Jesus and Nazareth, different people, Serapis, uh, all these fake ass messiahs would come and anything they spoke that was against the state, people agreed with that. They didn't see the God and they just saw somebody speaking out against the oppression. And there's people that speak out against certain shit now that's still evil and wicked as fuck. And you make them your leader because it seemed like they speaking out against that which you against. But you wicked as fuck. So you agree with, with stuff like that. And that's how people people get fooled, right? And um, this is linked up. I have videos where I'm showing you where the Roman Catholic Church backed this Judaism that took over from, from Israel. Like, again, listen. Judah, in fact, had just teamed up with Assyria to subdue Israel. Jewish Israel people. Revolted two years later, only to have its government dissolved and a sizable chunk of its population forcibly removed by the Assyrians. This forcibly removed population is commonly known as the Ten Lost Tribes, which is weird on a few levels. For one, the Northern Kingdom had nine tribes, not ten. For two, only the Israelite elite were ever forced into exile. That, that should be enough. Like, nine tribes and all the elite of the tribes get moved out you got a group of babes people that don't know the history don't know the whatever so the group of jews the judeans they do know they never lost their people because they went into an agreement with with the holy roman empire to uh to be sponsored by them i think i played that video as well too but i'll play it again no big deal at 44 minutes Pretty good here. A little different doing this than um, going live because I'll be responding to y'all live. And I like doing that, but it's harder to stay focused, so. They, uh, they're happy to be the nine form of duty. The, um, good citizens of the run Judaism that to find people amongst the Jews who they could work with and who they could sponsor. The Pharisee movement, which was always anti-temple, which wasn't connected to the temple. The Pharisee movement, after well, after the destruction of the temple, the Romans were in a position where they had to try to find 
people amongst the Jews who they could work with and who they could sponsor. This becomes rabbinic Judaism. There were some Jews who, who said to the Romans, All Look, of them. if you sponsor us, we will sit down and we will create a type of Judaism that you can live with, that you can deal with. It's basically uh, inward looking. It renounces claims to the Holy Land. It renounces claims to a temple. We don't want a temple. We don't want to rise up and, and build an army against you. We're happy to be um, good citizens of the Roman Empire if you just uh, let us get on with our religion and leave us alone. And, uh, and the Romans were happy with that. They sponsored that type of, uh, they very particularly sponsored that type of Judaism. They gave them grants of land, they gave them money, they gave them scribes, they gave them assistance. And uh, so at the same time as wiping out the more dangerous forms of Judaism, they actively sponsored the benign form of Judaism that became rabbinic Judaism. Rabbinic Judaism, sponsored by the ancient Romans and Islam. Don't um, don't um, Muslims don't get a pass in this issue either. It's, like I said, it's the Muslims, the Jews, the Christians, um, Muhammad, Muhammad himself. Um, listen to this. The Prophet Muhammad received revelation from the God of Abraham around six ten in Mecca. Prophet Muhammad received revelation from the God of Abraham around 610 in Mecca. Muhammad received revelation from the God of Abraham. Revelation. In modern day Saudi Arabia, he began preaching the religion of Islam, which thinks of itself as a continuation of Christianity and Judaism. In fact, for the first 14 years, Muslims... Christianity and Ju Judaism. Religions, both of them. That's what Muhammad thought being a Muslim was, was a continuation of Christianity and Judaism. Sorry, sorry, Ramadan, he's, um, it's all the same. And it's going to be y'all ability to be what the creator created you to be, to come out from under that belief. Like, again, I have no belief in anything, nor do I have need to believe in anything. Everything that I need done, I can do it. And if I can't do it, it's not the will of Allah, alhamdulillah. It's not, it's not his will. I'm good with that. I'm good with it. You know, um, some of us don't know the life we supposed to live, so you step outside of that. And it's going to be struggle for you. You know, you got to get your order together to know what the creator wants you to walk in. You could chase that person life. And they could be five pounds heavier than you, where that's perfect for them. And you pick up that five pounds, you got to have a heart attack and struggle with that shit. You dig? So. Prayed facing Jerusalem. Listen to this. Praying to the east. That started with the Hebrews. The Prophet Muhammad received revelation from the God of Abraham around 610 in Mecca in modern day Saudi Arabia. He began preaching the religion of Islam, which thinks of itself as a continuation of Christianity and Judaism. In fact, for the first 14 years, Muslims prayed facing Jerusalem. According to Islamic tradition, Muhammad was flown by God to Jerusalem from where he ascended to the heavens and met God. Well, not exactly met God, but you know. However, Muhammad's teachings weren't popular and he was expelled from Mecca. He established a small state in the city of Medina to the north. Medina itself had quite a number of Jewish tribes living there with whom Muhammad had a good relationship at first. He even told Muslims to fast on Yom Kippur. However, as he became more and more established as the head of Medina, he came into conflict with the local Jews. Um, Muhammad didn't have a problem with Judaism. As a religion, he had a problem with the local people, you know, the local tribe. So he never had a problem with, with the religion of Judaism. As the history goes, and that's just clarity on that, but uh, y'all know I don't believe in Muhammad, right? And that's not to hurt any of y'all feelings that do believe in Muhammad, but I don't believe. Is that is that wrong? Y'all understand what I'm saying? And I give all praises to Allah, the creator, you know, the beginning and the end. I give them all, all, everything, all to do. So if y'all upset with me because I don't believe in Muhammad, you should check out your relationship with the Most High. Don't, don't, don't worry about me. I'm good with the punishment that would come if I'm wrong with saying 
I don't need Muhammad. I don't need Jesus. You know, I'm good with what God will deliver to me, the cancer that I went through. I'm good with that. Had it been my end, I pretty much was good with that because I didn't take the chemo either. So it's not just me surviving the cancer. Sorry for all y'all that know somebody that had it and want that to be the story. You're not shitting on me. You're trying to shit on what I'm saying about the creator. And I ain't going to let that happen. I don't give a fuck about what y'all think of me. I don't care. But the word of the creator is something different. I'm not going to let y'all stink that up with your, your disbelief when there's no relief, no belief required. All you have to do is walk it out. It's an instructional manual. And I know even more and more now because I know people haven't dug in half this shit claiming that the creator is on their mind. And I see other things in people's life, the time they put into fuckery itself. Or the time they invest into fear. This time that they invest into all these things. And if they invested in Allah, the creator, the rest of that stuff would be crystal clear. Because the facade or the fake out of what made you happy wouldn't be as glaring. And you wouldn't have made decisions trying to get this to get ahead. Trying to do that to get ahead. And come back and snatch you up. Come back for everybody. Even people with money. You know, like money, money don't buy you out of feelings. You're going to feel something. You have these things. That's your nature, right? Money ain't supernatural. Can't stop death. Can't stop fear. Can't. You still have all those feelings. You might have money, but I bet you can't buy your way out of feelings. Never be able to do it, right? So what you need to do is overcome that by walking in the spirit. And you walk in the spirit by knowing the absolute truth. So your knees don't buckle when you face with something that might seem like it's not. Or when you know that you've done some things that require you to get checked for how long? I don't know. That's between you and Allah. But when you realize what you did and make amends for it and say, you know what? I did mess that up. Honestly, um, I found this out following the scripts too. Uh, First Kings 8. Um, this script is is it's tainted as well. It's it's not truthful. And in my in my research, the the Davidic line, all of that is jumped and corrupted by the Judeans or the Jewish people, who are really people, contrary to the Hebrews to say Jewish, they kinda like no, they're Judeans. They that's their name. Like Moabites or whatever. The Phoenicians, uh, Palestinians, all these people practice the form of Torah with some added gods, local gods. You know, check that out, too. So these people, they are Jews, you know, and but they jumped the manuscript with the Masoretic text, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Israelites pretty much got whatever was left of them got absorbed into some shit. The Romans were the last people to deal with the Samaritans. Check out that history. And the Samaritans disappeared, but they're still here. They don't have Samaria anymore, but they still exist, maybe 800 or so. Do your research for that. But in First Kings, this is this is what, what they're saying. Like they know that man going to send. This is King Solomon. He knows that man is going to send. And this is where it's mentioned in prayer and what's involved in that prayer. All right, so. Says Solomon convoked. Her. I don't like the storylines because it's it's lies. A lot of this is is lies and hyperbole. The numbers are bigger than what these actual people were at the time. All this in my own research, and you can find out just like me. And it's fruitless for me to sit here and give people every string of receipt that I had, and they not gonna research it. I learned that too. Like I'm not gonna wear myself out, and and people just don't take it, you know, and. I understand why everything in the street, everything in the world is the way it is. They'll look right at something and say it's not that what they see and can be tricked into believing in something else. COVID showed that. Y'all didn't master yourselves. You was waiting for experts to come and tell you that what I knew the whole time. If I had passed away, it was by the will of Allah. It wasn't any mask going to stop something in the atmosphere. And y'all believe that. Y'all believe that you could run away from the hand of God. Like, did you really believe that? If that had happened, it was over. 
I got that part. I I really knew that I couldn't outrun that. Like, and I and I didn't I didn't believe it. From I, I had no belief in it. None. No fear about it whatsoever. My whole family, none of us. It wasn't our business. Say pestilence come to the land by your righteousness, you're gonna be okay. I didn't believe it. I knew I would. I knew we'd be okay because that wasn't here. wasn't my business. I had scraped my plate clean. Everything I had done, I said it. I knew that I had did some things wrong. I basked in it. I didn't ask out of it. I wasn't pr trying to pray my way out of the work. What I was trying to do was pray my way into keeping the work daily so this could go away. It's like treating a wound. The wound don't just go away. You stop wounding yourself and then the wound can heal, but it's still painful. But your life being in order will cause that wound not to get opened up again. But it's going to stay faster. And if you keep doing the same thing, whether out of fear, belief or whatever. Right. So this is what King Solomon said. I'm going to first Kings 8 and 46. I recommend you all read all of it. But for what I'm trying to get over, I'm going to this verse, not in the Israelite manner. Yo, he using verses. Nah, I don't need to do that. Again, no numbers, no congregation, no Passover. It's just me. When they sin against you, for there is no man who does not sin. And you are angry with them and you deliver them to the enemy. Enemy, whatever that is in your life. And their captives carry them off to an enemy land near far and they take it in their heart. In the land of which they've been carried off. And they repent and make supplication to you in the land of their captives, saying, we have sinned, we have acted perversely, we have acted wickedly, and they turn back to you with all their heart and the soul in that land of the enemies who've carried them off, and they pray to you in the direction of their land, which you gave to their fathers, of the city which you have chosen, and the house which I built in your name, give heed in your heavenly abode to their prayer and supplication, and uphold their cause. The prayer is you've been wicked, it's not asking for shit. It's, it's getting in line, knowing that you've been wicked. And with that, then you start doing what the creator told you. But in that moment, ain't nothing going to change. That's the acknowledgement. You worked all that time to that position. You know, the creator didn't, didn't put a time limit on you for your fuckery. Like you just worked and worked and worked. And now you want the deliverance back just like that. You built on that, right? So now you got to unbuild on it and you working those muscles to unbuild to strengthen and you not doing it anymore. It's got to be pain. It's got to be something to make you understand. Like if somebody could just buy their way out of it, they keep doing it. It wouldn't be any less in it. And sometimes we went too far. Sometimes it can't be forgiven from the creator. You know, sometimes we went that far. We not good with dealing with the accountability of being outside of what we were supposed to do. We can't get that off. You old, you know what I'm saying? You old and the minute you understand you old is when you begin to change. You know in your heart, you make supplication. You make supplication, you change. That's what it is. And um, what prayer for anybody that don't know, prayer is not for you to ask for anything but order. It's asking to stay focused in the ways of, of Allah, not asking them for money, health. Why would that be something that you didn't have unless you were out of order and money not a part of it? You know, money, money don't cut you, stab you, shoot you. You feel a way about not having money, right? That make you feel a way. But if you got your heart broken, you had money, the money couldn't change your feelings. It's not the money. You use that as a tool, but the money tooling you, uh, different shit you get into is outside the scope of Allah, but you make that the primary function of your day and then try to equate whether you successful or not successful in it with Allah. Like he not there. It's not his business. You know, you doing your own evil counsel. That's you pursuing your own unjust gain. Right. And when that consume you, then that's what you have. Um, damn. Proverbs 28 9, I believe. He who turns a deaf instruction, a deaf ear to instruction, 
His prayer is abomination. You understand, like, how are you praying? And you, you, the instruction, like, when I tell you to pray, like, I'm praying to stay in focus. I'm praying to stay doing what Allah said. If this don't support it, I don't know what do. Who He who turns his ear to instruction, his prayer is an abomination. How, your prayer is supposed to be about instructions, staying on the instructions, staying on the, with the creator. What would you be praying for? Health is yours already. What did Adam pray for? Health, it was his already. What was Cain and Abel doing? What did they need to pray for? What was they sacrificing for? Because that's no sacrifice, giving thanks for having already. Cain didn't do it quite right, so he got shunned as the story went. It's saying that even that story of obedience, Cain wasn't obedient, so the creator turned his back on him. Proverbs 28 and 9, he who turns his ear to instruction, his prayer is an abomination. I've said this in ways like your automobile insurance. You get into a car accident and you call up Allstate and you don't make a monthly premium to it. What? How are you going to call up and ask for coverage when you haven't been paying for that coverage? That's your day-to-day -day walk with Allah. you doing what Allah said, not what a man said, a rabbi, anybody. You have access to this book now. It's your shortcomings. It's you not being honorable with Allah. It's not Allah hiding anything. He ain't hiding me, and I ain't hiding. I'm not hiding from anybody. I've attacked every religion that's out there. I don't know who's out there, who's listening, who could be mad, who could be angry, but I'm saying exactly what I see. And I'm not afraid. And, and furthermore, I walked it out. And I don't know any of these other men that you may have come in contact that walked it out. It's dead. I give people grace. I give people what the creator gave me, right? But I did it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to have to start saying that even more. Because people are afraid and they mistaken the creator for something else. You know, I've done everything I'm said. I'm not asking people to believe. I'm telling them exactly as it is. It's up to y'all. Y'all y'all choose to believe or not to believe and think that it's going to be some magical snap and everything is okay. I, I've never said that story. And I actually stay away from speaking about spiritual miracles and all of that. Because that's not what the creator wants you to understand. He wants you to understand cause and effect. You grinding it out, you know, by your hands. You self, Lord and master. You're not and never have been a victim. You know, at one point you became conscious. You knew you just blew it off. All of us did. That's not fair to the creator. It's not, it's not fair to Allah to be like, well, I got to coddle you. If I know what I know, it's capable for his creations to know. I don't need to be deceitful because I know I pay ultimately at the hands of Allah. I know that y'all can't put cancer in me as much as you wish it. Or if you didn't wish it, you couldn't pray it off me. You didn't pray it on me. It's by the hands of Allah. I've wrestled with that. You wrestle with emotions. I had those with the cancer as far as the fear and then... Worrying about other people that would have been affected by me passing away. So I'm galvanized in it. I'm not doing any guesswork. I'm not asking anybody to believe me. I'm sharing my relationship with Allah, with the creator. Maybe you you can benefit from it. Maybe you can't, but it ain't no different than what I'm telling you. And I don't need you to believe it for it to be so. I'm, I'm sitting here. You, you tell me something. Along the lines that I told you, that no other man hands is involved. And I don't want to hear about your mother. Nobody surviving shit. And they went to the hospital to do it. You disrespecting Allah. Y'all ran to y'all Jesus, y'all doctor. And no, it's not common sense to go to the doctor. The common sense is to eat right before you get to the doctor. Now, all those years I ate out of fucking weight, like way over there. So now I got to go to the doctor to fix it, disrespecting the creator even more. So, yeah, I was scared. Yeah, I was anxious. I had all that shit just like anybody else 
that got sick, but everybody want to pass. Or oh, you different. No, I'm not different. No, I'm not. I'm just not afraid. Well, well, maybe I am afraid, but maybe I walk in the supernatural when that time when that time happened. Maybe I'm stubborn. Maybe I want the last word enough to say I did everything in my fucking power to fix it. If you can't say that, which sometimes meaning enduring some of your own bullshit in your hands, then you're not worthy of of the creator or that relationship. And people vision will always be blocked because you let people get in a way of you in this relationship with our creator. I'm open. I'm here. Like in every piece of information, wherever it's coming from, I'm getting it and, and comparing it to this piece, that piece, that piece. I'm not looking for religion. I'm not looking for acceptance. I'm not looking for anything but the truth that the creator gave me. If anybody say it was Man wrote the book. That's the best you got. That's it. I'm still sitting here. Not dead from the stomach cancer. That driver's license miracle I pulled off. Me defending myself, getting found innocent by that judge for driving without the license. That would be modern day miracles, right? If not, then you do it. For you sit back on your high horse and try to give judgment. I do that to you. I'm like, nah, you do it. That's where I'm coming from. I'm like y'all, like the, the worst, but I'm not on that shit. I'm like, whatever y'all say, I got you. You prove that about what you talking about. I got receipts for what I'm talking about. You got a lot of fucking talk a lot of belief. Um, I don't believe in anything. There's no need to believe in it when you can walk out everything you say. Everything you say. And let me let me minimize it and maximize it at the same time. Anybody can make money. Anybody can get a job. That's not special. How much money you make, how much you want to make, that's, that's something completely different. You told yourself, you was going to be the man with X amount of dollars or the woman with X amount of dollars. I ain't got shit to do with that. I know getting a job and working ain't hard. You can find it. Which you aspire to have your eyes. Now, that might be different. Which you can get fooled into saying make you the man or the woman. That's on you. But having a job is not that miraculous. Walking that path that the creator put us on, that's a little different. Difficult. Your body, your, all of that. Your mind. It's a little difficult. Just getting up, being a robot, going out with somebody already got set up for you to do, right? Religion. If you're religious, there's no need to pray. If you pray, you don't need religion. Like, that's order. You don't need to go with a group of people to hang out with a group of people to do what Allah commanded you to do. And the reason that I'm using Allah too for all you Christians and everybody uh, Muhammad, Muhammad is a Christian. Muhammad is a Jew. Like it's the same religion. I've quoted third Surah 84. And it don't matter that the people in the Middle East or Arabia are older. And it seemed like more authentic and ancient than what I am. A lie is a lie in any generation. And I've gotten to the bottom of their shit to their split. And all of this is based off Abrahamic faith monotheism the story of abraham as he's no longer doing what all those other people doing in levant he decides to go with l one god monotheism for this abraham is given the blessing of being a progenitor of all these nations abraham's firstborn son name is what it's no way it's no way that Islam is not the oldest Abrahamic faith. His firstborn son's name, Ishmael, the secondborn son, was a, a child of incest. Isaac, Sarah, Abraham. Um, I'm not going to argue the point where I can see y'all can believe and conjure yourself into believing. Well, God used a mystical kind of power and forgave Abraham for having sex with his sister 
and well, it's the nation of Israel. Israel is not a people. It's to wrestle with El. To wrestle with El. That's it. Israel is to wrestle with El. This understanding of local gods is especially helpful to explaining the division between Israel and Judah. The most important god in the Israelite pantheon, or the Elohim, was El, or El Elyon, literally the highest god, to whom the Israelites were commanded to make animal and grain sacrifices on top of Mount Gerizim in the city of Samaria. This common belief in El Elyon is what kept the tribes of Israel united, and ultimately what kept Judah out of the fold. Because as far as the Jews were concerned, the true identity of El Elyon was their local god, this might not seem like a big deal now, but each god had its own hereditary. At this time, the Israelites and the Jews practiced basically the same religion as the Phoenicians, with a handful of core gods that everyone would have known, and idiosyncratic local gods for each tribe or city-state. Mm. A lot of people who read the Bible for the first time as adults seem to take special notice of the fact that the high priests were usually either corrupt or incompetent, but their power structure kept Judah unified and stable. <laughs> Corrupt power structure kept them unified and stable. A corrupt power structure. That sound like anything going on today? What else I got in here? Isaiah is mostly popular with Christians because of his so-called apocalyptic prophecies, which seem to correlate with the life of Jesus. But Isaiah was reflecting his own time with the belief that, hey, Assyria might be dominant now, but if Judah becomes a just and fair kingdom, it'll become the great power of the region, and Israel can join in. Did I mention that Israel and Judah were enemies at this time? Judah, in fact, had just teamed up with Assyria to subdue Israel. Subdue Israel. Judah, in fact, had just teamed up with Assyria to subdue Israel. Israel revolted two years later, only to have its government dissolved and a sizable chunk of its population forcibly removed by the Assyrians. This forcibly removed population is commonly known as the Ten Lost Tribes, which is weird on a few levels. For one, the Northern Kingdom had nine tribes, not ten. For two, only the Israelite elite it's were crazy, y'all. History is it's all at our fingertips, and um. This is where I get my cockiness out of my arrogance. This is, it's in the research because I'm not doing this with trying to open a church or trying to battle anybody. I, I just want the truth. You know, and I'm getting it. I mean, I'm living it. And it's, it's working in my life. So the verses, the verses mean about as much as you apply them. Like memorizing these verses mean very little if you're not looking at them to... Um, to use them. At this time, the see, the Israelite tribes represented just a handful of polities within the larger Canaanite civilization, which had a common language and a common religion based roughly around a pantheon of 24 to 40 gods. Before the Bronze Age collapse, Canaan, the area comprising today's Israel, Palestinian territories, Lebanon, and parts of Jordan, was actually part of the Egyptian New Kingdom. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 25-year-old Hezekiah ascended to the Jewish throne. Hezekiah was a big deal, even by royalty standards. He was born during the ministry of Isaiah, and a lot of biblical scholars believe that he's the baby Emmanuel, who Isaiah predicts will bring Judah to greatness. That's a lot of hype to live up to. And Hezekiah didn't disappoint, because with all his fresh labor and capital, he became the builder king. The majority of Jewish architecture from the Davidic period can be dated to his reign. Jerusalem, until now a city that could be measured in square feet, was quadrupled in size, with huge defensive walls stretching across the valley of Siloam. By far the most impressive of Hezekiah's works today is the Siloam Tunnel, an underground aqueduct excavated through half a kilometer of solid rock in order... Hiskiyahu, the might of God, that's Hezekiah. This is who uh, Isaiah was talking about in um, 7 and 14, and then the servant. To, um, he will be called the might of God, mighty counselor, because Hezekiah did all that stuff. And Isaiah was talking about, like this said, um, I believe in their time. Wait a minute. Did I? Shit. Nope. I didn't, I didn't get that part. Wait a minute, we go. Isaiah is mostly popular with Christians because of his so-called apocalyptic prophecies, which seem to correlate with the life of Jesus. But Isaiah was reflecting his own time with the belief that, hey, Assyria might be dominant now, but if Judah becomes a just and fair kingdom, it'll become the great power of the region, and Israel can join in. Did I mention that Israel and Judah were enemies at this time? Judah, in fact, had just teamed up with Assyria to subdue Israel. So this is this is the Jews. This is this is their history. Their their deceit, their in and out, like 
And what you have today is sponsored by the Holy Roman Church, the Roman Catholic Church. So the Jews and the Romans ran society back then and they morphed into something a little less um, noticeable today, but it's still the same power sources controlling the media, controlling the propaganda, and controlling your feelings. They still run everything by state-based churches, state-based ed uh, uh, education, anything. It's, it's approved by them, you know, so they can predict where everybody will be at in society. They give all, give all the trends off based on you being coveted, you being in the rat race, and the scripts speak against that. The order speaks against running after stuff. When you hear about poor, righteous teachers, it's not about being broke and poor, but that mentality to to not chase and have all these things would, would serve a lot better. Like when you have what you need, you can you can save more than trying to have what you want. It'll always be more stuff that you want than you actually need. So that's an order too. And if you out of order with that, the creator can't shine. And it's not saying yo, uh, don't buy this, don't buy that. The word of God is not going to be that chop. Like, don't you know if you got $5 left and you try to buy something that's $10, it's fucking ridiculous having an overcharged account, right? That's not order. How can that help you? The creator created us for order, so you being overdrawn on your account is not God-like. Your whole life, it's not going to be don't do this, don't do that. You have to be able to make the connection with order and law coming in your life. Something that's not good for you can't be in order with a law, and you got to know. You know, it's not up to a law to come and slap you in the face and say, look, you need to come to the mosque. You need to come to this place. You got a book right there. And I'm quite sure, just like I understand that when you search for understanding, you get it. Some of y'all are in my life for that understanding. Conversations that I had with Allah, y'all popped up. I got texts from this person, uh, inboxes from this person, and it's all a part of my walk. I share that. I'm arrogant as fuck. I'm, I'm egotistical, but I always share that with other people, what y'all did, what y'all mean in my day. So my arrogance don't fall on me being better than anybody else, but I know I'm, I'm going to be hard to outwork really hard out work and that's a challenge every time i challenge y'all the same way i challenge me so if you feeling bad about then imagine how i feel with me myself like i let myself down before anybody else the cancer none of y'all gave it to me none of y'all got rid of it none of y'all have an opinion right now on my relationship with allah you can listen to it, decide for yourself by what Allah said, not by what you think you're fair any of that. That's not fair to Allah. You know, I'm walking just what he said, and it's working out for me. So don't don't look at me. I didn't write. I didn't write this stuff out. But I'm stubborn. I'm combative. I'm petty. I'm egotistical. And right now, it work to be that because I'm not giving up where I am with the creator without seeing something else. And I've known I've been on the Hebrew diaspora. And when I found what I needed to find out or when the truth got revealed, that got dropped. I'm not emotional about any of these titles. That shit will go. I'm here now. Anybody that's talking about Islam, like, are you trying to take over Islam? You doing it wrong? I'm doing it wrong per who? What do you have that I want in Islam that I need to bow down to you to get it? If you paying taxes serving Islam like that, that's not the kind of Islam I want. I ain't an enemy of the state. There's one nation under God. That's what I walk in. So I'm not going to let a man that's bowing down to the state have that kind of conversation with me. That's ridiculous. And they will honestly try to pull you back into make it attractive to be a slave. I'm like, dog, I'm not that per Allah. And I'm not asking. But do you see me trying to take anything from anybody else by not paying taxes not having a driver's license. No man on this planet can take me somewhere and say I did anything to him. Can't. Per Allah. When y'all get that, you'll understand about praying, not praying, actions, all this stuff. Because I didn't pray. I did not pray in, in court. 
I went in there with law, and the law stood before me. I go before you. That's law. Law goes before you. It will always go before you. If you don't go in law, the law not going to work for you. He who turns his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is abomination. You know what your prayer is? Asking to stay in order. Stay in formation. If you out of formation, that's out of the hands of Allah. As long as you're in that formation, you won't get touched. And had you been out of formation some other time, you're going to take some damage for that. It's going to be punishment for being out of formation. Alhamdulillah, if it don't take your life, if it don't take a family member from you, praise the creator for that because you can fix it. Islam, y'all. Shalom. Shalom alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. And enjoy your day.